pre-Columbian Negroid bones found within America. Today I'm gonna be showing you guys a PDF document. This was written in the 1930s and I'm gonna just show you guys what the paper says, not even my own opinion, because I'm not even someone who believes that blacks were here before Columbus and all that stuff. But this is some decent evidence that I came across. So I'm gonna show you guys this. All right guys, so here it says we got, it says um, two skulls from the West Indies, male Negro from Barbados, British West Indies, okay? Undeformed male Indian from Cuba, okay? So you'll take a look at it, we go here. As you guys can see, they are in 1939. This is man, a monthly record of anthropological science. Now, here it says, the recent paper in this journal by Brixton, Trevor, and Julian implies that an undeformed Negro physical type inhabited the Virgin Islands in pre-Columbian pre times. Not only is this implication contrary to previously accepted findings for the Antillian area, but it also fails to give adequate consideration to the possibility of these skeletal remains presenting intrusive Negro burials. Over here says, moreover, I, I venture to say that few physical anthropologists familiar with American Indian skulls would mistake for the Indians, those illustrated by Brooks and Trevor and Julian. Indeed, most physical anthropologists would probably be less conservative and say Negro instead Negroid. In support of um, the uh, opinion that these authors are describing Negroes, I wish to present a similar case from Barbados, British West Indies. Let's look for something where it says, upon reconstructing the skull from many fragments in which it was received in Washington, I felt justified in calling it a Negro for reasons that will appear from the following description, okay? Two views of the Barbados skull are shown comparison with the two skulls shown in the paper by Buxton, Trevor, and Julian indicates that inv individuals and sex differences are no more than would be expected of the range of variation in a single race. Certainly, however, m such Negroid features as alveolar prognathism, broad nose, and low orbits are more pronounced in the in the case of the Virgin Island skulls. In order to evaluate better the metrical findings, Table 1 contains measurements of indices of the Barbados skull in comparison with the range of variation of the five males from the Virgin Islands and with that 68 male Negroes from Bennington, 1912, Gaboon series. These figures are presented for what they are worth, which unfortunately is not very little. This is probably very little because measurements are very imperfect descriptive agents and more than one racial group may fall within the same range. The eye is able to detect racial differences that are only masked by figures. I have selected the Gaboon series for comparison because it is from the west coast of Africa and is about the best available. It is not, of course, fully representative of the population which the Negro slaves were shipped to the New World. The table shows the, that the Barbados specimen falls within the range of the Gaboon Negroes, except for maximum skull length and cranial index. Likewise, the Virgin Island specimens fall within it, it, this range, except from nasal, nasal and orbital indices. The exceptions, as noted above, are more in the direction of Negro than to American Indian. In addition, I may point out Negro, a Negro character in the Barbados skeleton, namely that the long bones, particularly the femora, are straighter than is the case in Indians. Radio humular index, which could be either Negro or Indian. Maximum length from right arm femur is 423 millimeters, which corresponds to that of one of the males from the Virgin Islands, which without going into further details in um, connection with physical type, I will uh, call attention to one thing that clearly proves the Barbados specimen to be Negro. The photograph of normal frontals 
showed the upper median incisors, the only incisors, to be artificially pointed. We have here a well-known type of the West African dental mutilation. As you guys can see, again, they're comparing it to Gabon. They're seeing uh, very strong correlations within these um, comparisons, okay? It says that a notch between median incisors is a distinct type of dental mutilation in Africa. So these are more uh, connections, it says, in the view of the fact that the teeth of the Barbados skull have been subjected to mutilation, it is perhaps significant that skull from the Virgin Island has four lower incisors missing and that skull from the same locality has what appears to be a notch between the upper median incisors by reference to Vaughn I hearing I hearings paper it will be seen that some African tribes practice tooth evolution either with or without tooth filling a notch between the median incisors is a distinct type of dental mutilation in Africa although no further evidence would seem to be needed for refuting the inference stated in the beginning it is desirable to show and how far this is contrary to previously accepted findings in the Antillean area. Okay, table to summarize the skulls from frontal bones to the West Indies that are available to me either in the literature or in the collections of U.S. National Museum. The small collection from Cuba, which history is unknown, stands apart from all the rest in showing no frontal occipital deformity. The contrast with Barbados skulls shown in the same plate is so striking that I will give only three indices for the Cuban cranial index, nasal index, orbital index. It will be observed that all three of these figures fall within the range of the Gaboon skulls. However, only two of the 68 Gaboon skulls have nasal index below 47. And only eight have a cranial index over 79. I believe the Cuban skull here illustrated will prove to be fairly representative of the undeformed Indian populations of the Antilles, of which those described by Bush and Trevor and Julian certainly are not a part. There are very strong consistencies and very strong correlations between these skulls found here in Barbados. And this is what they look like, okay, in the American islands in Cuba, I believe it says. There are some strong correlations between these skulls and Negro skulls, especially those from Gabon. So with that being said, guys, um, let me know if you guys think, if this convinces you. If you guys want to see this paper for yourself, I'll leave the link within the description. Um, Yeah, man, if you guys have any explanations that might... um explain how this is possible how it happens definitely be sure to hit me up um you can me up on my instagram you can join my discord server and let me know and um educate us you know if you know anything about this be sure to let me know in the comments educate me educate the ones in the comments maybe have a conversation and yeah that being said i'm out